Servants are not greater than their masters. In John's Gospel, Jesus speaks these words to his disciples at the Last Supper before he's arrested. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear that Paul is obedient to the Holy Spirit, but he uses principles and diplomatic compromise to evangelize under complicated circumstances. For you and for me, many centuries later, in a very different time from St. Paul's, how do we distinguish between a call to stand firm and a need to bend and compromise? How do we remain faithful to our master, Jesus? You know, I know many parents get disheartened by their children when they don't practice the Christian faith that has been taught to them. And parents may wonder, where did we go wrong? Did they pass on the faith as they promised when they were married? Perhaps these scripture passages can give us some guidance and some hope. There's an old saying that kind of goes something like, one can be right and lonely, or be tolerant and have friendship. I'm not sure if I've got that saying quite right, but I think the meaning is clear. Doing everything flawlessly and obediently might look good, but it doesn't endear us to those who struggle with moral issues. Recognizing the frailty of human freedom means being tolerant of that human freedom. Human freedom out of ignorance just might choose wrongly. But charity reminds us of our human frailty, that we are not God. Charity reminds us that we too perhaps were at the same leg level of ignorance. Parents, to the best of their ability, Try to teach their children the principles that will help their children to grow wisely as they grow. Jesus' words, servants are not greater than their master, is really an expression of humility. Children grow in knowledge and wisdom when they learn from the good values and the principles that their parents tried to pass on to them. You know, today we celebrate uh, the feast of, or the, we honor Mary as Our Lady of Good Counsel. What is counsel? Well, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit received in confirmation, counsel, is, can be also the same as advice, guidance, recommendation, suggestion, consultation, and advisement. Other words describing counsel as a verb our advocate, prompt, urge, charge, instruct, warn, admonish, caution. You know, often today's children are bound by pride. They're caught up in a very fast-paced world which demands quick and competitive responses. And because older generations learn to make decisions, perhaps in a slightly slower-paced world, they have more reflection, maybe more counsel. And today children seem to look down on older generations, maybe as out of touch. This is a stance of pride, because the problem is not about whether decisions are made quickly or not. The problem is about whether decisions are made with an understanding of the broader implications of a decision. And this demands reflection and counsel something that is often lacking in a very fast-paced world. Openness to Our Lady of Good Counsel in prayer and in reflection is not such a bad idea today. St. Paul seems to have been a man of deep reflection and counsel. He certainly spent enough time in jail to uh, reflect. And St. Paul listened to the abiding counsel of the Holy Spirit not to go into Asia. He listened to the abiding counsel of the Holy Spirit and brought along Timothy, who was half Jewish and half pagan, to help him evangelize. And above all, he recognized in humility that he was obeying his master, Jesus the Christ. His obedience to Jesus the Christ was out of love, not out of grinding servitude. His obedience to Jesus the Christ 
was in graciousness, not in competition. And so we who are watching this Mass right now, let us be open to the good counsel of Mary. Let us listen to wise people. Let us learn from the living faith of the Church. Let us reflect on God's mysterious gift of life. Jesus is our Redeemer and our Teacher. Let us give thanks for God's graciousness to us. Together now, let us ask God to hear our prayers and our petitions and humbly present them through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. That we may grow in wisdom to distinguish between a call to stand firm and a need to bend and compromise, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That whatever our difficulties, whether surgery or failing health or fear of the unknown, that we may be sharpened to realize God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Amen. That those of you who are unable to join your Catholic community for Mass may know God's compassion through lay and clerical Eucharistic ministers. We pray to the Lord. Amen. And for all who have died, especially those members of our families and our friends, that we may pray with them as members of the communion of saints. We pray to the Lord. And that each of you who are watching this Mass may know of our care for you in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we praise your holy name. We ask you to hear our prayers and our petitions. We humbly offer them through Jesus, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made it will become our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. God, we ask you to receive these gifts we offer you with humble, contrite hearts. Lord, wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquities. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept these gifts from your family. May we hold fast to the life you have given us and come to the eternal gifts you promise. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He is still our priest, our advocate, who always pleads our cause. Christ is the victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world, while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. <laughs> 